you have an idea of what that is. We'll be going a little bit further to talk about what it means and um, how it works. So design is in stages. You move from one phase from one stage to another. And at the end of the day, through the process, we're able to work with teams to create solutions to users' problems because we are designing for users. So at the core of everything that we do is for the users, whether it is from the research or design itself. Why are we are going to use it? We are here to stay and we belong. It, you should also know that there are other design tools out there. Like uh, we have Adobe XD. It, Adobe XD is not on the browsers. It's more like a software like Photoshop. So you have to install it. It's free. It to create, I'm not mistaken. I don't know anything. Solutions to... Um, I don't think it's paid. Last time I used it, it was free. And um, that's, it's been a while, but... Yes, you can install it on your browser, on your system and use. It so has the same functionality. The only problem is that it doesn't have... It wasn't... It, it has collaboration features, but not to the scale of Figma. Then we also have InVision, we have Sketch, and there are a little bit there are other softwares that are more that are paid, like um UXPIN and um the rest. But because Figma is on the browser, it allows for it's more accessible to more people. It's accessible to more people. You don't have to install any software or battle with anything. So that's why we're going to be using Figma throughout the class. And the learning curve is relatively smooth. So it's not really a big deal. If you are used to design software, or if you're used to, yes, yeah, design software generally, you would not have problems using, using Figma. Okay, it's already it's ten, it's nine. All right, the stream is live. If you're just if you're just joining, you can click on my at the end, my avatar there, then you can join the stream. We would also be streaming on YouTube. Would your output is slow? Well, okay, let me check that. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm going to optimize my audio right now. Okay. Let me, let me just turn on some settings to... Okay, okay, okay. I hope it's better now. Echo cancellation. If there is, if you used to find it difficult to hear what I'm saying, then um, please let me know so that I can still work on my tweak some settings here. Oh, we're starting now. Okay, so today we're going to talk about prototypes, how to prototype. Design. So, at the time you reach the point of prototype being a design, you must have created a design already. Like, you must have created the UI that you want to prototype because prototyping is more like presenting, showing how your work would look like when users interact with it. For example, if you want to include some interactions, like when people click on a button, what happens? When people click on a form, what happens? When people click on swipe, what happens you do this using prototypes and animation as well prototypes are just um, in figma it basically involves joining putting together multi screens for example duplicating screens and switching to the prototype tab and join them together to move the tool allows you to move to switch states then process of switching states demonstrate the interaction it is very important and value, especially when trying to move, communicate your design with developers. 
it's not just um, about creating designs because designs will end up becoming we be built. So you want to show the engineers what your design, all the interactions that is going to be happening on your on the mobile on the app you've designed, whether it is mobile app or it is web application. You want to show how users would interact with the, the platform, and prototype is the way is how you do that. But for this design, I was supposed to have. I've put our pre designs already, but we're just going to create something simple. We'll start with um, prototyping buttons and um, form fields. Then we'll now create, we'll be creating a login sign up um, flow. Then at the end, we'll just include an onboarding as well to the, um, to the prototype. Something simple, not, not going to be anything hard. So, yeah, we'll. Start with depends. I would. It's you can. You don't prototype. You can't prototype. For example, I just want. To, you should also know that. For, okay, I just used the click on this rectangle here to create this. You you can only prototype frames, right? So this is a frame. A frame is you get you get frames from this particular point in the app in the app in on Figma. You click on this checker um um this cross this cross icon here you click on it then you can switch to the frame the frame panel here you draw out you can draw out custom frames to look any shape you want or you pick from preset frames here you can see iphone all the way down to desktop tabs and even presentation slides as well as um different paper formats then um so these are the what the things that you can prototype so for example if you click on this rectangle and you switch to prototype mode you cannot play it let me show you so now there's currently it is on i've selected the when you select a particular object anything you select on figma you would see this rectangle this bluish highlight around that object it means that it has been selected so if you are going to type this rectangle, for example, you just need to click on it, then click go to interaction. Just you have to switch between the panels for design. By default, it will be on that design. Then you move it from design to. You can barely hear me. Please, um, Amaka, is this a general problem? Can can you hear me too? Please, I want to know if this is a general problem or it's um, only Mustafa that is having this issue. I can hear you. Okay. Okay, it's fine. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm going to continue then. So you can only put the type frames, like I said earlier. So you switch from the design tab to the prototype tab. Then you click on, you can see here you have starts, flow starting point, you have interaction. So when you click on flow starting point, this appears. This is like a play button. To show where the interaction would start from. At this point, you get much more. You get more, um, more functionalities to include in your design in your prototype. So if you check on this side of the panel, you would find the device that you, that will be that would appear when you play the prototype. You can switch between any of the options that is available for frames. So the frame options, you click on frames, you'll be okay. I'll be checking it from time to time to show everybody can hear me. So if you click on frames here, you would see a list of all these options, right? Frames that pre predefined frames that you can pick from. The same way, if you click on, if you move, how you get here is to you would have to select, not necessarily select, but once you have an interaction that. that
start. So normally what I would do is to use, there's something called auto layout in Figma. It basically allows you to keep your work organized and it's a very powerful tool. So you sell, you, you, you activate auto layout by clicking, you click, you have to, you are going to be clicking to, you are, auto layout works by selecting multiple layers. Mostly, actually, you would have to select at least two layers. So for example, this text starts then with the background rectangle. When I click on them and click shift and A, you can see auto layout added. So by implication, I can move things around. I mean, I'm going to center it right now. Then I would, I would make this smaller. And I'll just, okay. Okay. And I'll just expand this a little bit. I want to demonstrate something. So currently it is set to, the way it is currently, it's going to be in the middle. But I could make it to appear on the side. And if it doesn't go too much to the right, left hand side, the way I want, I can use change the, the amount, the number here, probably to ten, and push it a little bit to the end. But of course, you want your button to be centered. You want the text to be to be centered, not hanging on the side. I'm going to change this back to six. So we're going to say this is called keep this as our primary button. So say we we'll have button. And um, there's something called naming convention. It's basically how you name your components in Figma. And they are different formats, basically to help it easy for people, to other designers and other users of your design system or design file to be able to find information or to find what they are looking for, find components and find the work you created. So especially when you are working on design systems. In this case, we are going to be creating multiple button states. I'm breaking. Oh well, please check your network. Or I'm not. I'm not getting any message that that is happening. I'm in touch with with a markup. If okay, anyways, we're going to continue. We're going to create different button states, right? So this would be what default button, like the base button. You are going to name it button base. No, we call it default. 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 To be the default button, right? Okay, keep this one this way. Then um, we're going to make a hover state. Basically, what will the button look like when somebody hover over it, over the button? So for this, we'll just adjust the, the saturation a little bit. Let's bring it down a little bit here, somewhere around here. Then this will be. I'm going to show you how this comes, how this everything works together. Then we'll, this will be over, and why it is important to name your question. I'm going to refresh this. Then we're going to also create another one. We've we've created so to duplicate but, um, items. When you click on something, you want to duplicate it. You click. You can click on the Alt button. You click Alt. You can see that you there's another like the cursor becomes double. Then you can double. You can click and drag. <laughs> then you duplicate. That's how you duplicate. Then for this, you can have um. We're still going to be all these buttons will be filled. A filled button is button that the the background of the button has a color. Then the alternative to this, the alternate to this kind of buttons are this. These are like buttons that instead of having a field. Instead of button being filled, it is outlined. So something like this. I'm going to make this make this orange as well. Then also the outline orange. So this is an opposite. So we'll talk about why this is important. Why we, these two states can be very valuable when creating design. But for now, we, we're not going to talk about this outline mode. We'll just stick to the field types of buttons. So we have the hover state. When you hover over it, this appears. Then um, we would also include the active state. So active states can be very useful when people are navigating your website, like people that are have some sort of 
um, impairment, like they are using ex they are using another tool, they are using tools to access your website. No matter they access your website using particular key commands like the tab button. Audio is still breaking. Hello, is it better now? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, so for example, and we're going to move to a particular website. Let's just search. Um, let's just search Google. Hello. So if you click on tab on your keyboard, if you notice, there's you can see this thing. Okay, let me move to another one. And do you notice that this particular setting is circled? If you notice that's moved to each of those items, you can see this is how people that have um, that cannot see, especially people that are visually impaired, go through websites. So it's important to design for their own interaction as well, both in the code and in the design. And they might not it might not necessarily be this particular impairment or other forms of impairment as well. So we're going to go back to design. Just give me a second. Let me switch this thing over. Okay. So we have um we have an active button. The so active button we just introduce. We turn this back to the default color. Then we can add this just another color here. I'll probably try white. Let's see. No, white will not work. Then uh, let me see this. Yeah, increase the stroke to three. No, let me put it at two. Three is too big. Then um, make it a little bit more obvious. Okay. We we'll have this as active button. Active state. that we use the color gray. Gray is often used to, to associate it with um, not having life or not. Basically, when you have everything that has color and all of a sudden you see something that is gray, it would most likely communicate that this thing, this thing is inactive. So we'll just keep this a little bit here. Then now um, this will be our our um to be our inactive. No, it hmm. I'm keeping it here so that when we play the prototype, we can see it for beyond that. I'll just continue. All this. Okay. Um. Okay. Disabled. Yeah. We'll call the disabled button. We're going to prototype this now. So, so for example, how do you prototype? How we're going to prototype these buttons is um we're going to move first to the prototype panel. Then we'll click on you when we move to prototype all objects, all objects actually from this frame here. You can see it, all of a sudden you now have this circle in the middle with plus. Then even this rectangle I, we have here, it's, rectangle won't have just like I said earlier because of frame, but there are other forms where the rectangle can be prototyped. For example, if I add auto layouts to it, you can see that that plus item has a Appeared and it can be prototype. The other thing is, if rectangle is appearing in a frame, it would also have this plus where you can use it to prototype, or you will not have it appear. It a rectangle staying outside will not be an prototype directly. So I'm going to join this together. So 
this is supposed to work when users hover over it. Okay, I'm going to remove this from this particular place so that it will work. Okay. Um, we're going to join this button to this. Let me see further. We'll talk about what it means. Yeah, and to read this and connect works. it again. Okay. So this is meant to appear on hover. So instead of on click, on click is meant to the basic when you join stuff together. So I okay, I didn't mention that. I'm going to deactivate it. Just now. Then this plus sign allows you to connect objects together in your Figma file. So you can when you hover over it, it changes to plus, and it is visible. If no matter how far you are, you are away from your design, you can see that the plus is still visible. So you can design connect, have spaces. something here, and connect it to something that is a bit far plus. away. You will to see the plus sign that you are trying to select. You can see even if I select something else, you see the plus sign is visible. So click on this, the plus sign appears when we hover over it, then you connect it to this. Uh, this is supposed to be a, an hover effect. So you switch it to hover while hovering, this will appear. Then you could add an inter an animation. Or if, it's, if, we, if we animate it like this, okay, I you know what, I'm going to animate it this way so you would see what it will look like. I'll press the play button. It's going to load now. Hopefully, network. This takes doesn't take time. We just have something simple for the time. Then another thing is for the active state, we can have it like on click when users click on it. Just point it to the same place. Then say when users click on click, then it should appear. Then default will be then the disabled will just be disabled. Okay, I think this thing should take shouldn't take time to look. Just give it some more time. All right. Um wow. It's taking more time than expected. Oh shit. Okay. I do not want to refresh, but I'm probably just going to open a new tab and have this play there. Really it loads faster. I just turns with network. I'll probably this cannot be from Figma, it's definitely my network. Just okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, in the notice, I'm going to close this tab, right? So this is the default button. Then when you hover over it, you can see it changes to yeah. this particular this particular hover hover state. You can see this turns with network. Probably, I think it's this not cannot be working. It's definitely my network. Oh, there's a problem here. Okay, yeah. I'm going to duplicate this button and have it work directly with it. Then I'll deactivate this particular one. Yeah. I'm so, going uh, to notice, I'm going to close this tab, right? So, this is the default then button. Connect this then, to this. when you hover over it, then we'll go back to the animation and so on this panel you can switch this from here. Yes. Okay. No, it's definitely so click on this, then oh, the active appears. Yes. Yes. Simple. So these are just simple animation and uh, prototypes that you can create. We'll just also look at how to um prototype form fields. But for buttons, when you create your different button states, you can alt move between the different states depending on you can create this in Okay, probably, probably I should show you that before we move over to form fields. So we would, I would just deactivate all the interaction. All you can do is to select everything, then right click. Then you can see remove interactions. All the interactions will be removed. Then I would make everything here components. Click on this arrow up here. Then you can create multiple components at once. Then once you've created the components, just put that here. 
the same line. I'm going to also have this here. This is a duplicate. I'm going to remove it. I'm also going to make this a component. Okay. We'll just make sure everything is on the same line. We'll move to design. Then um, I would, yeah. So notice that all of them are now in component state. The component is another feature of Figma. Basically, it allows you to design um, once and forget throughout your entire team, like the entire platform. Instead of having different buttons in different places, on different pages, on different files within the system, you can create one button, style it. Then um, I would, yeah. Button. alternate between states, different states. And I think it's been some months now where Figma introduced a new feature that allows you to also prototype within Hi, variants. My name so is that's the point I'm trying to get to. So you can AWS have within a component. I know things are getting a bit complicated, I guess. Welcome to AWS um, but we're going to something where we else. Share best else practices but I just want to make sure that we exhaust buttons and what you can do in terms of prototyping buttons. So you can connect this button, for example, to this button inside the variant. Now, normally, if you are to do this, let me deactivate this. If you have a button outside, you have this button, you have this button. I'm going to remove the components from them. Just come to scroll down here, detach instance. Detach instance will take away, will disconnect the child element from the parent element. Remember I said that when you have created components and you duplicate that pair, that component, it will, they have a relationship of parent-child where if you change anything in the parent, the child would also change. But you can disconnect the ch child from the parent. That's what I just did here. Let me undo, then repeat it again. So you can see currently, this also has a purple background, a purple um, outline, like, if you check here, you can see we have button, button. This when you see on this work, this a uh, rhombus shape, this particular shape, it signifies child component. Then when you see something that looks like this here, look at the other panel. I don't know if you can see this as well. You see this a button, an icon that looks like this. It means um parent, parent element. So you or you can deact, you can disconnect currently as it stands. Whatever I do here, you can see it affects the children where I duplicated it from. I can disconnect it by you can select both multiple element components, child component and detach. You can see detach instance control alt p. So it has been deactivated. So at this point, 
if I try to connect, type these two together, maybe this is having a different color. Let's give this color, color blue, okay? So if I connect this prototype, this particular button to this button, if you check, we have options, right? Amongst to work. Or you can say on drag, navigate to this button. Or while hovering, button. This thing. Let's give this button the name. Let's give this blue. Then give this um, orange. Right? Okay. So let's do that again. So it's really easy to understand. So while hovering, navigate to blue. Or you can have the same thing here. It's it's very intuitive. It's it's even a statement, a sentence. You can make a sentence out of it, just like I just did. Then um, beyond the click on okay, let's go back. Well, I just returned back to one click. Beyond the navigate through, you can also perform other functions like open overlay. We demonstrate open overlay when we're working on the sign up login sign up page. Let's do that. Then again. um, you can also swipe. You can also open so overlay. So while hovering, navigate through. Or you can not is that there's something that is not active active this change to you can only use change to within a a variant so for example in this variant if I, if I prototype this join this to this you can see that change to is active then we can then say on click change to what we're going to change to this particular it's named hover we'll change to hover then um I can change the interaction instead of it to happen instantly. I can animate it. I can use the smart animate. Smart animate will it uses a few parameters. Basically, to check what you have in common in both frames or in both elements that you've selected. Like in this case, the two buttons and where we have similar things, it tries to make the transition as smooth as possible. Perhaps we'll have a better demonstration after this, after we've gone through button and forms, form field. But um, you could also move it to dissolve. So if you move to dissolve now, you have another extra function. So this is to determine how the, how the animation, how the prototype would behave. So if you move it in, is, is in, is out, you can see what it would be like. You can increase this. You can decrease the time, so I have to spend more time, maybe like um, 2,000 seconds. You can see, you can see the way it's animated, it takes time, but... Okay, I'm going to continue, all right. Then you could also switch between these different options, or you can custom create your, the, basically the flow of the animation, how fast it moves, how... weird in animation though we're going to demonstrate it i'm going to so now when we've connected this button to this button right and we've set it that it appears after 2000 milliseconds i can duplicate this control then i just pressed alt then i'm going to click and drag out then i'm going to play this button okay just give it a moment to load Okay, while, while, while that is happening, um, let, 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 let's see if it's supposed to, it shouldn't take time to load that. So, right. so, while that is loading, let's look at forms. Let's look at forms. Keep this somewhere here. We'll talk about outline later. So, forms are another UI element. There, is, there was a concept called atomic design that was started in early 2000, basically saying that websites are make, made up platforms, digital products are made up of small, small parts. So we have the icons, we have buttons, we have form field. These are like the minute, minute small details that form websites. So when you look at things from that angle, you are able to create precise experience. That
So form fields can be can come in different forms, right? So we have basically a rectangle. We're going to explore the different forms of um of form fields. So let's just have this. This is a bit too long. Let's just bring it. Reduce just five. Five is like my perfect number. Then um would include. I'm going to change this color. This color is just let's choose a stroke instead. Then I would change the stroke value to 0 0.5 just to make it lighter so it's not a bit too thick. It's going to, it was looking too thick before. Then would then name this um name this full name. Full name, okay, and the label. This is called label. The the the, the text describing a form field is called a label. Then we'll, we have a label. We have the form field field itself. We're going to introduce robot to this preference right now. Move this to regular. Move this to nine. Okay, nine is not bad. Then bring it down here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring out adjust the height of this just a little bit down. Okay. So this is a form field, right? So we can have a placeholder text here. I'm going to reduce the font size to at least seven. Try to be smaller. You can see enter your Full name here. I've seen a lot of designers when they create that placeholders, they leave the text. The the like currently, if you look at this, this text enter your full name is visually competing with the so full at this name point here, and it shouldn't be so. This is more like a text that once a person when once a user clicks on the phone field, it will disappear. It shouldn't draw that much attention. You can do this two ways. You can either introduce opacity. To make it less, um, to draw less attention, or you can leave it at hundred percent opacity and adjust the the color itself, make it gray. Try to not have that. Um, it should not be dragging for attention. Remember, we talked about visual hierarchy earlier during design principles. So this is another example of, of using of keeping your design. Um, ensure that it is visual. There is visual hierarchy in your design. Then um, we, this is the placeholder text. Then we can have um, what else? Maybe we can introduce an icon. Let's have an icon. Let's have an icon. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. Which of this will I should I use now? Okay. This should be big. Should have what we need. Okay. Let's see if this is loading. Okay. Uh -huh. So before we went over, so we had this interaction. Um, we connected, remember we connected this to this. Then we, we, we created the custom, we created the custom um, bezel, basically the whole up down, so it to be, we'll have a much more interactive um, design. So now when you come here, you click on it. Let me check, um, change to on click, okay. No, I'm going to change the color so it's much more because the transition is happening, but it's not that visible. I'm going to change this. Oh, this one is finally loading. Just imagine. Um, okay, let's go have user. It's a search user. All right. So while that is happening, I'm going to change the color from this from starts from blue from orange to blue so that the transition can be much more obvious. Then I'll probably change the radius as well to let's say 20. Okay. So when we go back to plates, we'll just start the let's start again from this. 
a click. You can see that, uh, let's, I'll probably increase this a little bit further. I want you to see the movement and the impact of the custom bezel we did here. I'll probably increase it to 6,000. Sorry, sorry about the background noise. Give me a second. Um, sorry about that. So, um, I just increased this to seven six thousand. Okay, so when you click, you can see the way it appears. You would see this even better when we work on on screens, but you can create custom best. Um, you can make the animation behave in a custom way instead of using the is out is in but it's advisable to stick to this is in is out probably the is in is out in particular just to have that smooth um consistent transition between two layers then um this another advantage of having stuff here another advantage of having of using Prototyping within variants is that on it keeps your design very tight. Well, you can on the custom the front now. You would have to have the, situation you can like make the animation very different in a custom way instead of using it. This 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 is the this is the hover. This is hover. Then this is default. Then let's say this is um this is disabled button. Before now, if you are trying to use this to create multiple of it and each time you need it you would have to create it again like if you need to even if you are going to combine of course you con you convert this into component then time somebody make changes to the main component it to be propagated throughout all the components or the button components but in a situation where you are trying to use the component you would have to if you want to use this The background appearance, like the parent button, and duplicate it to where you need it. So you would always have to go back to the source all the time. But with variants, for example, in this particular state, I can bring this particular button out. Then from this panel here, I can switch between the different variants we have in this variant panel, in variant setup here. So from here, I could change this button. This particular button and bring it here. I can change this button. You can see here we've already set this different style for the button, right? Um, so we can change the button from default to active. You can see that that stroke has been introduced. Then we can also change it to disabled. You can see it changes automatically. So I don't need to go back to the source and start collecting the the, the make uh, duplicated from the main components. It just makes my work easy. Just create ones and you go and sit down. You can just work on something else. You don't have to keep duplicating efforts. Because uh, as designers, we are trying to save time and work as fast as possible. I'm going to move this to it. Okay. I'm going to go back to this. So, um, a form field could have different states. You could have a state when users have filled the form. You can have a state when users use that thing I talked about, where you use the tab to hover to move over stuff. So what will it look like when somebody uses something like this to hover over the button? And you could also have um, a few other interactions depending on the type of form field. So in this case, we're going to have this one as the first one. We just keep it as five. Um, just group these two together and group it together with this. Okay. We group together with this. Then we're going to duplicate this to the space. Then um, we're going to have like a different state here. So here we'd, we'd want to simulate what will happen when users have completely filled in their name. So um, when, when for user to fill in their name, they must have click on the form. So when they click on the form, you want to make it different from when the form is just sitting on its own. It's a feedback mechanism. So when you enter a, let me show you. So this is Google. This is what Google form looks like, right? Like 
just come to Google for me. It looks like this. Mine is in dark mode. That's why it is dark. Then if you click on it, it looks it just if it was in desktop in dark light mode, you would have seen it better. But there's a drop down that was introduced to it when you hover over it and you start clicking. Interaction changes. It gives you feedback that okay, when you, this form that you're about to click on is active and it is working. At any point in time in your design, you want to give provide feedback to users. So creating the the states, what it will look like when users click on it is also very important. So we're going to give this for example. The, well, we've been using orange, so we're going to stick to orange. I'm just going to pick color from here. Okay, so we have um we have this selected. So you know, when 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 it is selected, we have this. Then we would also say, okay, when it is filled, we can have when the form is filled, we can have um. Let's say my name is Samuel, so just have Samuel here. Samuel, check one. Okay, but this one is for the place without not the main text. But the main text will make it a little bit bigger. Put it at nine. Then um, okay, okay, yes, something like this would work. Something like this would work. Okay, or you could use other forms to to differentiate this thing. So you could introduce drop down. Right, I don't think it's necessary to introduce drop down at this point. So I'm just that this on each other. Stack this on each other. Just a little bit, 20. Okay. Bring it down to this. Okay. All right. Um, so the purpose of creating this form is so that we can simulate what it will look like when users click on the form, right? So this is what the form looks like initially. And when users click on it, it will become like this then after users fill in their name it will become like this so maybe you're trying to demonstrate a particular with in between there are different types of form your form field can take different patterns if you visit um material.io the design system of google you would find examples of design system of different styles and in, you should not try to redesign the wheel or some of most of these things you use what people are used to in other websites, like what people, what is available in other platforms. Keeps try to be consistent to um to follow the design pattern that is currently being used by other platforms. So, um, for example, let's let's just go to material material dot io, then um forms. Okay. Why that is loading? I want to demonstrate, show you another kind of form field. So there's one where you can have this. Just remove this one. Necessary for this particular form field. You can put this here. You do. You would have to reduce the font size a little bit smaller. Then it would be here, just above here. Okay. So you would find different types of form field on the Google Material Design Design System. It's, you would learn about how to use them and which of them to use depending on the design you're working on. So give me, let's see. Well, here we have this particular style where you have a plain background, then you have the stroke line underneath. Then you can obviously move between the different states, like, okay, you want to add error text, helper text, then a few other characteristics. Right, then look at this other form field where the text, the label basically comes in between the stroke, the stroke that creates the form field. Then you can also now have something like the one that we we did. This one where you have the label up, then the form field down. And there's another one. I think you would find this somewhere. Like, yes, see this one. The form, the name, the the label is inside the form. Then in some cases, when it is like this, when users click on it, the name goes out and stays on top, just like we have here. 
just like we have here. And other times it would just move up a little bit. Let's 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 have a few a few a few try on this. So we'll have this. Then we'd also have the part where this one we're going to remove the radius, keep it at zero. And I'm going to just convert this to flatten this. Okay. And I'm going to just cut out one side of it. And then I'll join it back. Okay, just put it here. Then escape, pick this one up again, take it up here, escape, turn back, then bring it back in. If I don't have this, then I can bring in this on this label and have it in the middle here. Now, instead of going through the process of custom building your form fields, you can check, you can get the um, form field designs from. You go to the Figma community part of Figma, you can get form field that have already been created so that you just speed up your work instead of creating form field from scratch. But it's important for you to learn how to do these things yourself as well. So you can have your label here, then you then have your placeholder here as well. Let me just introduce a little bit of radius here. I think I'm not a fan of, of hard edges. It doesn't quite work well for me. I'm going to ungroup this. Okay. It's another another way of creating another style of form fields. So we're going to animate these things. We're going to prototype these things. So I'm going to keep this one here. So when this is what it will look like initially, then when users click on it, it would be to change. So what we to change to would be something like this. this in this in here i'll just change the parameter to two since this one is two this one is two right and the conditions are the same so we'll just have this here to bring this one down to seven this is what this is five we we'll bring it up here bring it to six so it's just going to have like one point size difference so this is what happens when users click on it. Then we'll also change the color of this to orange to show that it has been selected. I'm going to reduce the font size of this to five. Not really, let's push it up. It's a bit too small to read. It's hard to read rather. Then um, I would reduce the opacity a little bit more. Reduce the visibility a little bit more. Okay, let's have it somewhere there. And um, all right. We can have this as what happens when users click on this. So let's quickly prototype this now. Let's quickly I'm going to group all the elements here. Group. Then group. I'm going to group this to this as well. I'm just going to put it into the group manually. If you see, if you see this panel, initially this was outside. So you could just click on it to see. It wasn't inside the group, but you can select here and add it to the group. Then um I'm going to prototype this down. I'm going to bring it out of this frame because it's not possible to prototype stuff inside frames. You prototype in the frames themselves, not the content of the frame. So you want to bring it out if you have something to prototype that involves um working with frames. So I'm going to have this, select this, and um I'm going to add a frame to it so that it can be prototyped. Okay, then we're still going to add a frame to this. Then I would join them together as well. Join them together. Where is this then? Okay, yeah, switch to this, navigate to this. Then I'm going to use Smart Animate. I'm going to use Smart Animate. Then I'm going to make sure that the naming is the same thing. So this will be called, um, this stroke, for example, and to also name this this stroke as well. Then um, what else? This will be we'll call this 
on forms, then what slash um, default, then we're going to have forms as well. But instead of default, we're going to have active. Okay. And then um, we're going to keep this at smart animate. Then we reduce this from the 6,000 that we used to that time to 800. 800 is more like the default. Then um, navigate to, okay, let's play this. I'm going to keep this on the background so that it will be, it will look, it will look nice. I'll keep this on the white background here. I'll just expand this. I'll expand this a little. Then, um, then I'll play this instead. I'll play this frame instead. Okay. Uh, it's going to refresh. Just give it a moment. Yeah, it's refreshing. Okay. You can deactivate. The, remember, I talked about this particular part. You would find more tutorials on on variants, um, components, auto layout. I know I mentioned the auto layout and um, a few other stuff on how to create design systems. Today we're working with components on Figma YouTube channel, so you can go there and watch more stuff there. Then let's have this. After this, we'll just go back to create a simple UI that would animate like three, four screens. And uh, let's see how it goes. Then we'll end the class. It's supposed to just be on. I just wanted to introduce you guys to prototyping, how it works, especially using Figma. The beauty of this, especially when you create creating components for small elements like buttons and form fields, just like I said, I'm repeating myself is that when you put them in variants, I would probably, okay, I, I can't show you right now, but there was, okay, perhaps after the class, I could share some links. It can be very helpful because you can easily switch between states and for your animation, you animate everything within this particular variant, then you just export, pick, duplicate one of the components that you need into your the, the UI, you want to duplicate it, whatever interaction happened in the variant would happen in that place. So you have this custom built, agile, effective component that would work anywhere you put it. And because it's a component, when you change whatever it's here is here, it will also propagate to all the child children in wherever you've used them. And form field is a very important element in design. You find it everywhere, everywhere you go, you you need form fields in your design, no matter how simple or complex you're, what you're trying to create is form field is important. Whether it is a search field or it is um, something else. So, okay, this is it. You want to click. Oh, oh, okay, okay. This is supposed to be, sorry about that. Let's get this here. And I'm going to put this, put this here. Then, um, Let's name this one. This one too. Okay, I'm going to go back to that place. Let's click. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Is this a perfect duplicate? Give me a moment. I'm just trying to check the alignment of things. Okay. Oh, it's not behaving the way to, I want it to behave for. Okay. I'm going to ref go down. We're supposed to have more options here. Give me a sec. I mean, I mean, I mean, let me add an interaction for this. Make this four. And this will be five. Okay. So back to design four. Okay, then um, hmm. 
there's a way it's supposed to behave that way, and we're not getting that interaction right now because of the the they were not done. I'm going to delete this and cost and just duplicate this into the space. Then I would change this directly, just so that Figma knows that they are the same thing. The animation take place seven. Keep this seven. Shit up. Then I would join this button. Join this line to this line. Then I will change the color to to orange. Okay. This is what five. I think we leave this thing as five so that we might save it as seven. Then I'll wait to reload this again. Now oh, this is plain. Okay, set to play. And let me also set this to play as well. A question, please. All right, you can ask a question. We'll be running off soon. Just um, shoot your shots on your questions at the show you have. Okay, so please connect us to this, sorry. Oh right, yeah. You need to, you need to, can you see that smooth transition between the two states? So we have this. So in click, you can see it. It moves like it was just the same thing and just changing form. That's what happens when you use smart animate. You can notice, click on this. You see, smart animate was used, and of course, you can change this to see some to be more dramatic um, interaction. Let's see, go back. Click. You can see there was this sort of walk, like just with a little bit back and forth before settling. How do you cut the line and join it back? Oh, it's um. Let me show you. So you can come here. We had this right. So let me try to recreate this. Just draw a rectangle. And draw a rectangle. You can turn it to a stroke by clicking on the stroke this plus sign allows you to add the fill fill would give it something or make it look like something like this if you press this minus it remove it the same way you can add multiple fill you can see you can have this particular fill and you can add another fill to it you can see the opacity is different you can add another fill just keep adding fill with the plus button there the same way you can add stroke add multiple strokes we'll talk about that probably later about the advantages of that and how you can use it but we just leave this thing as a stroke, right? When you double click on a stroke, let me just move back. You double click. You double click on a stroke. You'd see that the 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 selection changes. It now has initially it was rectangular. The selection was rectangular. You can see we have square here, square here, square here. When you select it, it changes. You can see one. You have this sort of pattern. Then you now see that here is now a circle. With this, you can change the shape from a rectangle to anything you want. So what I did was, there are two, there are different options. So first, you could do this: just select the pen tool, then come here and add extra points. Right? You can click add this point, click done, then probably select it again. Alternatively, instead of doing this, you could add another point. When you add a point, you press escape. And disappears, click done. Then the advantages of that is that you can then come in here and delete this one. And you can see you've created something similar to what we had before. Then you can come here, click this pen tool. I want to join from here so you can draw it outside like this. Then um, you can come here and pull this one. Sorry, no, no that's not what's meant to happen. Deactivate this, try and pick it again. Just select this and pull back, pull it back. Then you have something similar to this. You get it's spent to you can use funny enough, you can create illustrations with Figma. It's because it has the basic um, tools you need to create illustration a pen tool to create organic shapes. Then you have gradients, you have all these other 
um, effects. For example, if you just check down here, you can see the effects panel. You can introduce drop down, layer blur. This will basically blur whatever it's being selected. You can add background blur. Then you can add in add drop shadows. So these things with it, you can create even much more interesting designs, but that's not the focus of this particular class. We've achieved our goal. So I'm going to just animate this backwards so that you can move back and forth. I'm going to connect this back to this. Then we click. Uh, you see the way it's, it has it's shaking. That was because of the particular animation I used. It was is is in is out backward but you because that one's a bit dramatic you should just stick to is in is out instead of the one the, the one that has back instead of the is in is out back you have a much more smooth flow okay then um let me just create something simple a a land a we'll, we'll create like some screens i'm thinking login sign up then we introduce form fields. Then um, have some simple interaction. All right, let's 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 get to work on that. Um, I brought in some illustration here earlier, so I was thinking we just have a simple. to select that way. Okay. Okay. This instead. Okay, I brought this in earlier to use for the design. First, we'll create an onboarding screen, then we'll create the login sign up. An onboarding screen is, is a screen that appears that which appears when you download the web a, a mobile app, for example. It's not just mobile apps, it also happens on the web as well. Basically, the platform is trying to help you understand what it is you used for. If I, I don't you could it's supposed to be able to recall sometimes when you install an app and it would make you slide through multiple screens. And those multiple screens, sometimes most people do not really read those things. So there are actually alternatives to using on body is basically to help users to on to use the platform, especially first time users and also existing users. That's because of onboarding. And um it's done in different ways. It could be done like the way I mentioned earlier, I just have screens initially joined together like one we're going to create now. Or you could use things like tooltip. I don't know if you've ever visited a tool. You've ever installed a tool for the first time. And when you install the tool, you would have this thing where they will be pointing you to different points in the tool. Like, okay, you, this particular thing is used to do this. This particular thing is used to do this. This particular point is used to do this. That's some boarding, actually. It's another form of onboarding. It can be done for existing users. For example, when Figma introduced um, FigJam for the first time, there was an onboarding process. Basically, they, they guided existing users who are new, of course, to that particular tool on how to use it. This is a little bit of digression, but I think it's important we understand a little bit of onboarding. Um, I hope your question has been answered. The person who asked earlier, but we're going to just create something same for now. And um, let's see, I'm thinking we do this. Mm. We use the we stick to the orange color we started with earlier. I'm going to just change things up here. Ah, uh, see. I'm going to remove this. It's not going to work. Just push this up. Make it a little bit bigger. It's not not something complex. Just something very simple. Then um, I'm going to give this thing as white background. Keep this in as white background. So let's write C save money. I'm going to increase the font size, don't worry. Save money. Save money with ease. With ease. Then um we'll just make it a little bit bigger, push it to 18. Let's have 22. Then push it to the middle. And um, increase, change it from this to bold. It's a head, and so let's make it have that. Um, after the image, people should see the heading first. I'll just keep this at sentence case. Okay, we have this. Then um, would have a short paragraph here, just like saying, okay, um, let me just have like okay, 
um, save money. Let's just say money for the app allows you um, save your income. It's just some random text. Just I'm going to reduce the font text because it's meant to be a body text. It's not supposed to be this big. I'm going to push this to 12. Then I'll remove it from bold. You don't put right. It needs to be visual hierarchy. So if if the you have um of course your heading will be in bold or maybe if not in bold it will be bigger. The body of your text should be smaller in size to show the hierarchy that this is the heading and this is the body. Then another thing is that you should not be using bold on body text. Body text like the long paragraphs that you have in on the website or in the mobile app. So easy money allows you to allows you um save your income income in one click on one in one click okay one click um it connects your bank account to easy to save money i just have this money and that's all and that's all okay let's just have that so something simple money i need to join this together because it's most really like the name of the brand let's just have something much more different let's say um savelle so, uh, so that would be the name of the brand I mean, the name of the app and change that to savelle Okay. I don't know what Sabel means. Don't ask me. <laughs> um, it's to put this here. Drop this to ten. Okay. It's not be competing with that. Sabel allows you to save, save your income, save your income. Yeah. Oh, where does the get sir? Yeah, that's yeah. Your income in one click. And just tap this, then join this here. That's all. Okay, let's have this here. Okay, simple. Two by two line text. And we'll show. Okay, so this also happens in e commerce website. So when. Okay, so serif and serif. This is actually is, is sans serif. So I would sans serifs are um sorry serif fonts. I would say you should if you do not understand typography, you stick it should not really dump into them. They they are hard to use and they can easily make your design look terrible. And um you would see platforms where it is used, but if it is not done carefully, things can get really crazy easily. I'm going to just stick to serif fonts just for this. I'm not really concerned about the design. Just want to show us the prototype. So we're going to have I'm going to pick buttons from here. Here. Um just pick button from here. I'm going to put the button somewhere here. So we'll say next. Next. In some platforms you'll see an arrow here, but it's not necessary. That it is animating left or right, it's going to move to the next layout from here. I need to bring this one down, bring this one down here, and push it, make this 24. Just make it a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to use shape progress bar so that users will know how many times, how many levels we have here. Then we can do that somewhere here. Just have this. Make it five, then um, I'm going to keep make this. I'm going to keep this here as orange. And then we'll have gray for the rest. And just pick the gray color from here. Okay. Then I'll deact. I will make the gray a little bit white lighter so that. It's so gonna look like a different color on its own. Okay. All right, this would be better. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just keep this then. 
No, 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 that's not what I want to do. Hmm. I'm thinking we have this up here instead, so it's a bit more visible. Let's keep this here. And then bring this button down. Okay. Just push this into it. Okay. I'm not saying that. So I also wanted to mention something. If you click the key button on Figma, your selector turns into something like this. If you notice the arrow, this is what it will look like when it is not selected. Then this is what it turns into when it, you click on the key button, the key, the key key on your keyboard. So this allows you to scale whatever you select in proportion. Prop, it, your, the scaling of the object or what you selected will be done proportionally, more like the content, for example, the key is selected now. If I try to scale this particular frame, notice the frame itself and the content of the frame is scaling in the same order. Like we're not having distortion. If you don't turn off key on key, for example, let me use the normal one. If you notice this, is what happens? It's not even going to scale horizontal and vertical. It's just scale the horizontal that you've selected. Even if you use this, if you use, if you select from the angle from this particular point here and drag, you see that everything is going to be scattered. Or oh, using K, you can increase the size of everything proportionally. It can be very helpful beyond just frames. It could be um, images. You just retain the quality of the image when you're increasing or reducing the size. Okay, uh, we'll just duplicate this. Duplicate this again. Let's have three. Um, I box. Some savings. Okay. Just uh, keep this here. Remove this one. I think I have another illustration that might just work. Mm -hmm. We just use this one. This, this should be, this should work. And I'm going to resize this. I'm going to change the color of this to, to try to be consistent. Um, would also change the, I'll change this one to not this orange. I mean, this orange looks nice actually. Mm, okay. Let me just keep this here. And um, just, I'm going to change this to orange as well. Then um, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to use a Lighter color here, just so it will not look like everything is just orange, orange, orange. I don't want to introduce a secondary color. Let's not spend much time here. I uh, would use um, invest, invest in stocks. Um, that should be better hidden. I'll keep this one here. And the third one would say um, generate, you can generate. Virtual, virtual wallets, okay. Virtual wallet. So um, have this here. It's supposed to be a wallet, not like this. No spell of wallet. Wallet. Okay. Oh yes, wallets. Then we will have this here. Then this will be. We'll change this to orange. Then we turn this back to gray. Then we'll do the same thing here. Orange, then turn this one to gray. I'm oh, sorry, not that. Change this to gray. Okay, so perfect, perfect. Um, okay, this this works. We're rounding up, we're rounding up. Oh, the duplicate frame, press Alt. When you press Alt, you... You select if some when you select what you want to duplicate, for example, you select this illustration, you press Alt, Alt on your keyboard, it 
LT, which is beside the space bar. You click on it on the left side of the space bar. You click on it. You see that there's an so the key the, um, pointer changes. You can the click and drag, and this happens and duplicate. Or you can use Control D. You can see I just click this. You can see just click the layer Control D. There and voila, you have to. Then, if for example, let me show you something very interesting. So you have this, and if you already know this, nice. So let's just do this for the sake of others. So you have this, and you've already duplicated this several mm -hmm. times, maybe three times already. You can just say Control D, and somehow Figma knows that from the already three you 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 duplicated in this order, Figma would continue to duplicate downwards. So let's let's do something different. So you see that. Um, so let's say we have this you duplicated upwards, duplicated, duplicated upwards again, then control D. You can see it just continues to duplicate upwards. So that can be very helpful when you want to repeat something many times. Then also you should also know this is more like not really a hard but something that is common sense. Maybe you are trying to duplicate, create something to 20 places. And you've created like maybe four already. Instead of continue to duplicate them one after the other, you can select everything. And you see, now we have eight. And if I select all eight, now we have 16. You get, so that saves time. Okay, let's let's just let's just leave this at this way. We're going to keep this form away. Then um, at this point, just just some, just three. Then here we'll just have a login. I would say create account, create an account. Let me zoom in so you can see. Create an account. Let me bring this up here. It's, an head. it's, it's, it's the heading for the mobile app. This is a mobile app, or emphasis. This is a mobile app. And um, keep this here. I'm thinking we increase the font size to 30. Then we do this. Hmm. Let's change this to the photo. This works. Create an account. I just leave this this way, and um, we'll then pick the form field that we created earlier. Let's see which one should we use. Let's use let's use this one. This one looks nice. We use this particular form field. This particular form field. So I will use that key I talked about earlier. Click on key. Yeah, we scale the entire form field accordingly. Then you can put it here. Scale. I don't think I want it to be bigger than this, so I will just use. So for example, this is a this this particular this is a frame. If you check here, you can see this cross sign icon similar to this icon you click to create frame, meaning that this is a frame. So a frame inside this frame is made up of so many things. Inside the frame, there's a group. Inside the group, we have all these things. So if you are trying to, you have a complex stuff that is grouped together. Into, like now, for example, this particular illustration is a group. Inside this group, you see there are small, smaller groups. Inside each of the groups, there are now the individual elements. Perhaps you want to select um, the dollar, this dollar sign here. Instead of you going there one after the other, you can click on the control, your control key. When you click on control, wherever you are, you can see that it shows you the very, the base item, the base um, shape object that you can select. If I click now, you can see I can, I can click Alt and duplicate this. I just brought out the dollar sign from the coin there. And that's another very helpful tip. So yeah, just um, we're going to collect full name of users. We would also collect their email address so that we can send them OTP email. Oh, it shouldn't be this small. Why? Email, what the heck? This should be, yes, eight. This should be 8.4. Okay, email address, and I'm going to just do this. I'm going to adjust the stroke, adjust the stroke a little bit away so to just sit right there in the middle. I think it's it's advisable to use email address instead of using email. Don't assume that users know distance, so that um 
don't just complicate things for users and as much as possible don't think because you know a particular thing or you know how to use a particular function or you think you people will be able to do it as well assume that your users are dummies that they don't know anything then you can from there build up what you can add shortcuts for advanced users and stuff like that but you want your interface to be as intuitive for people who for grannies basically people who have little knowledge of using the computer so here email address let's just use this default that we find a lot online john Doe. and um at gmail.com i guess it's just um i'm going to reduce this font size to nine then i will also reduce the font size of this consistency very important you don't have a place for that that is looking one having this a side different size in one form field and looking a different way in another form field it has to be consistent in your design then we can have password here and um pass password okay let's just bring this closer then um uh, we'll just see it characters at least at least it's characters character long okay so another thing is that from form fields or passwords rather if you want your users to put in like a particular number of characters oh my goodness i hope you all can hear me I guess y'all can hear me. Please, you can hear me. Indicate too, so that I would know where the problem is coming from. So um, I'm going to add. So yes, one thing for passwords. Passwords. You should add that icon to allow users to be able to toggle between view because you can't expect that pass users should be able to remember their password. Passwords are very could be long and have multiple things that do not relate to the user's life for them to remember all the time. So you want them to be able to see the password they are imputing. And you also want them to be able to hide it because they might be in the public and they don't want the person next to them to see the password that they are imputing. So we're going to use an icon. We would also, when working with engineers, you would, when they see the icon, most times they would know. But if they do not implement the JavaScript or the interaction correctly, you can speak with them to ensure that it comes out the way you want it to be. So we're going to use the I, search I. Uh, please don't waste my time. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. This is, this is wasting time. I'm going to use this. This is that website. Very, very good for finding icons. Whoa. This is interesting. It's interesting. This is meant to load. Okay, it's loading. Sorry about that. Okay. Then um, we just searched password. Search password here. Then um, I don't know why this thing is misbehaving tonight. If it continues, we'll just move on without it. But basically, you have to ensure that you include stuff like that in your icon, in your design. It's very important. Let's see, I'm going to pick another plugin. I'm going to pick another plugin. Oh, yes, something like this is what I'm trying to get. Okay. Ah, ha, ha. This one's they want me to log in. Uh, I won't be able to log in right now. Okay, let's see if we can pick from here. Uh, this password, search password. Mm, let's search I instead. Okay. Let's, I'm going to use, I mentioned earlier during the tutorial when we we're talking about icons on the UI, UI class, the icons could come in two forms. It could be strokes like outline form, like this one. You can see this one is just line. Or it could be filled in this form. You see the way this icon is. 
I'm going to pick these two icons. So we're going to pick this one, bring it out here. Okay. We have this okay okay then we're going to select this next icon set another icon oh i think we should use this instead okay. then we'll have this we'll have um okay use this too okay, just cancel this i duplicated unnecessary ones that we won't be needing so we're just going to delete them I don't want us to use the field icon. Okay, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. And then delete this as well. And um, I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to reduce the font size of this size of this quickly. So just like I said earlier, you would use this to help give users the ability to control, to have some level of control when they are filling forms. The, the control here would basically, they'll be able to toggle the visibility of their eye. Otherwise, you, it, the form could, um, the eye, the, when they are filling their password, it could be like, it could be like asterisks when it is hidden. They just have um, asterisks all the way down when they are typing the password, when it is hidden. Alternatively, it then shows the password that they are putting in directly. And I just mentioned why it is important. So uh, let's just continue. Okay, another thing is that feedback, very important. If you're creating a financial product, right? You're creating a product for um, a crypto platform where password is very important or a, a, a fintech app, right? So you want to ensure that your Pass users use good passwords, like they use strong passwords. And this, this might not be enough because people can just type one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight characters, but it's not strong. It's easy to break, it's easy to predict. So you could add extra information down here. Like you can tell them, okay, down here, that your their password should be um should have it include must must include include then you can have Undone it must include a, a character, a character. Then, whenever they include, um, sorry, I get the spelling wrong, they just leave that. Basically, whenever they when you do that, I would you, I would probably I'll send the prototype to this after the class. You when you do that, users will be able to know, okay, you want them to include the character, right? What else? You want them to include an alphabet, you want them to include a number, then they you then. You create the design such a way that when each of those things are included, you tick it as green, so they know that okay, this particular thing is included. So you can they can you can help them create stronger password and protect their own account against hack. Then we can just have the submit button here. Nothing serious. I'm just going to leave this thing here at this point. Submit or create no not submit. Create an account. Create account. Create account button so uh, let the button see what it does let it let it be let it let the words describe what you can do with it um okay this, this looks horrible i know but we'll stick with it so a quick animation we're going to prototype this quickly because we're running out of time right so we'll just join this together. You click on the button because this is what users will click on to then to move from one screen to another. Then we'll keep this on, on smart animate. Then click on this to then you move it to this screen. Then click on this and move it to this screen. Keep it on smart animate. You would see the beauty of it in this moment. Then um, I'm going to deactivate this interaction that's coming from up. Right click, remove interaction. Okay. Um, all right, just, just just keep this out of here. Oh, I see. Um, so we're going to play this quickly. This should be flow two. Uh, okay, it's loading. So I hey, there's something else. Uh, when this form is supposed to stretch all the way down, 
to the end to at least cover 80% of this format like this. Uh, let's see if this prototype is ready. Okay, it's not ready yet. So you want to ensure that the Let's move this back to design. Then select this shape itself. Bring it all the way down here. Then do the same here. I'm going to use ruler to keep this thing consistent. I was supposed to do that from the beginning, but trying to finish up as fast as possible. I didn't remember. Then I would also do this. And drag this to the end. Okay. Okay, I think the prototype is ready. Let's play it. Uh, already yet. So um, you can do this while the prototype is loading. You change it to iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max, so that when the prototype is loading, to load on iPhone 13 Pro Max. <laughs> Let's try and just turn it a bit more together. Okay, it is ten load. This is taking a little bit more time to load again. Um, so okay, you okay, just let's see. Um. Oh, we're going to, I'm just going to keep make sure that this is aligned center. I just keep this aligned center, join them together to ensure that this will be aligned. Oh, finally. Okay, this is still loading. Um, okay. Uh, this is taking more time than necessary to load. Well, basically, I would send link to this. Oh. Let's open the file again. Oh yes, it is loading now. Oh, this this is this just shouldn't look like this. Just let's let's figure out what happened. The design shouldn't look like this. So of course, when you click on this, it moves between the different screens. Then you have this. But let's figure out why it looks like this. Shouldn't look like that. Um, dismiss this. Come here. Let's see what frame was this. This is um, 428 by 926. Okay. iPhone 13 Pro Max 2. And prototype was iPhone 13 Pro Max. Not Pro Max. Uh, I think it was a different screen size. Let's see. I need to refresh. I should see something better now. So for buttons here, it should be better if you make your buttons to just cover. Like, um, let's see, 70 to 80%. Okay, let's see, 45, over this, control C, put this here. Enter, do the same thing here. Whoa, this thing is still looking weird. All right, um, let's see what happened again. Not this. You know what? Um, hmm.
this is what uh, we have. The frame is three, three, five, by six, seven, nine. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to switch this mode, this screen size a little bit, and we have this. Wow, okay, no wonder behaving this way. Mm, I'm going to just remove this, this completely, then I just have everything come to the screen. And it's behaving this way because, if, for example, if I, had, if I had selected this, you can see that this frame looks like this bigger and covers more space. But the particular frame that we use for design is smaller. So that is why it is behaving that way. It is not covering the entire screen. And um, yeah, so let's play the back again. I'm going to refresh this. Oh, yes, perfect, perfect. So I'm going to start from one. I need to start from two. Okay, two is the first one. You need to really play this thing again. All right, so it should it should function. It should work well now. So I just explained why the prototype was looking weird. It was looking weird because the frame was different. If the frame was if we, the frame from here was bigger, you can notice this is bigger compared to what we use. And um, if that was exactly the same, it would have come out the way it's supposed to come out. We just have this. We should load in a moment. I'll share this to the community soon so we can see it. So basically, that's it. Um, we are going to stop here for today. Um, we covered prototypes. We covered how to create, um, but work work with prototypes, especially at um, the atomic level, which are the, like the individual components. We talked about how to. We talked about component themselves and how to prototype within variants. Then we also talk about different states, form states, and um, the prototype within them. There are much more you can do. We also talk about smart animation and how they help to, when you create, when you're working with smart animation, it's important to ensure that the names of the, the layers are the same. And it's even very, it's, it's even better when you duplicate. For example, you want to animate between this screen and this screen and the next screen. Just duplicate the screen and put it to the next, frame, duplicate the frame that you want to prototype, then you can just change the content. In that way, Figma knows that, okay, these two frames are connected, then the, it's, the, when you click on Smart Animate, the transition between the two page, the two frames will be smooth, and you can see that effect there. And um, there was something I was going to show you, but we are running out of time, we couldn't. Basically, how to create the countdown timer with um, with Figma, with um, Figma, and um, for example, we can have zero zero one all the way down to. I just have this to five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Changes to two. Changes to three. Changes to four. Then changes to five. Just to do something quickly. So I would also demonstrate another way you can prototype. Then I'm um, just trying to make this all components, then I'll make them variants as well. Then we're going to connect them together. We're going to join them like this, then join them like this, then join them like this, then also join them like this. Then we turn it back to the beginning this way. Then I'll pick one of them. So what we, one more thing to make sure it is working is that instead of it to, to move on click, we'll move it from on click to after delay. So it will move by itself. So if I move this one from um, click to on after delay, then the same thing here, on click to after delay, then um, change this to to on click to after delay, and the last one that is going to take it back up, on click to after delay. So now when I'm going to put this in a frame, I'm going to keep this in a frame. Just keep it in a frame, then we'll center it here. 
then uh, this is frame 13 this is frame 13 so we're going to we're going to play this we're going to play this now aha uh -huh. okay so look at the initial so watch this um progress bar up press next you can see it's smooth you see that smooth movement between the between the different layers that's that's auto um smart animation and then now um, you can see the way it moves from the bottom moved from the way it was to this which is much more smaller and it moved up from the down part where other buttons were then let's move to frame i'm going to select this one we'll give this one a flow starting point which is flow six you can come here flow six is supposed to be added already since taking more time to load i try refreshing this thing to take a little bit more time again perhaps we should just do it since it's the last thing we are doing before the class ends you will learn more about prototypes on um youtube then um yeah youtube will be very helpful because most times these are practical stuff it's not something that you can read up books on it's something you just have to see how it works and understand it and practice so um i would advise you go through youtube check figma web figma's website uh, youtube channel i mean then um check other places for for valuable content on prototyping Let's see, this should be up now. Um, presentation is supposed to be on the black screen. Okay. Um, once it's 10 loads, would you see the animation? Basically, it's it's simple, but it's very, very effective. In the, the other way of creating this is that you put one in a frame, you put two in a frame, you put three all the way down to all the five numbers, you put them in frames. That you're gonna start connecting them one after the other. It will quickly make your design file heavy and can get make things messy quickly. But with this, you just have everything in one place. And for example, from here in the design file, like I said earlier, you can move between one to five. You can see change things up as you wish. It can be also very valuable. Um, oh yes, so you can see three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Like you can adjust the speed according to what you want. Then of course you can also change the you can change the the timing, like how long should it wait before it starts animating? Before it starts, they could also add okay. I'm going to include smart animate now so that you would see something a little bit more smooth. The transition between the, the each of those numbers will be much more smooth. And let's see have this smart animate. Okay, the matter is not underneath this. And last one, yes. We'll just go back here. Okay. Okay. If you notice, there is this smooth, this is gradual transition from one shape to another. If I slow this, if I slow down the animation, you would see it even better, even clear, more clearly. But uh, you can use this when you are creating, for example, a countdown timer on maybe the app has at some point this supposed to be an interaction for a countdown, or you want something to behave without users interacting with it to perform it to move in a particular way without user interaction. You use after delay to create things like that. So you you can find after delay here. Instead of on click, you scroll down to this particular point, you find after delay and um yeah that's all you can also play with this remember there's custom here you can custom create these things of course when you're custom creating there you can see how they will behave here then um yeah okay let's not create anything too crazy in this one um in case you want to deactivate which i don't think anybody i don't see the need you can if you check at the bottom here bottom right you see enable interactive components so you can deactivate it you can activate it just click on the button then um yeah there's more to this so you you would always keep learning keep improving your process keep improving your skill you can do a lot with figma with terms of prototyping you can create some more dynamic experiences like on scroll 
on um, creates even parallax effects on browsers on Figma here. So um, they just wanted to give you the basics of introduce you to the tool, to the feature on, Fig on Figma. Then um, if you are able to build anything within the week, please share with the community and let's see what you've done. So time for questions. Time is up already. Yeah, this is Chrome browser. Chrome Acts. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have used Brave Browser, but my Brave Browser is not accessible at the moment. Brave Browser is another browser that would work well, but I noticed that if you do not have strong internet, it can be a bit, um, can lag a little bit. It, it, it's lightweight compared to Chrome, but it still be, has its own weaknesses. So, yep. Questions? Do you have any questions for me? Concerning the prototyping on Figma. We'll be open for questions for the next one minute so that I would answer them on the call. Other questions will be answered directly in the chat. Mm, not seeing any question yet, and I'm not seeing anybody typing. So, okay, someone is typing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. So, um, so it's just. Um, questions? Do you have questions? Do you have questions for me? Okay, um, how did you solve the problem? Which of the problem, like uh, prototyping acting weird on, fig on, on Chrome? Well, what I would advise, what, what I noticed that works is that you, you make sure you close your tabs, like reduce the number of tabs that you have open, right? Like just close as many tabs that you don't need at the moment so that you would consume less RAM and um you have your the prototype will have more time to more um memory to consume. Then you don't have to check network. And the network is another reason why prototypes prototyping of Figma can be a little bit annoying. Really a lot more annoying. <laughs> so um but you could try other browsers as well. I had Firefox behaves so it's not so not that bad with Figma. Then um you can check Brave browser. Projects and that tool as well. Yep. No other question, right? Um, let me check. No question. Question. You can yeah. You can also install Figma your laptop. So you can install the the desktop software. It also works too. So um, you can also consider doing that. There were a lot of design blunders that were made on this in this particular UI. And um, I just had to make sure I, because the focus on today's class is prototyping, not the UI. I also tried to mention some of my, where I thought about the design, like the input field, the whole interaction around when user clicks on an input field, how it should behave, right? So, um, would you want you to take note of all those things because it's very important. Design is also very important, but um, we just, I just had to, John, we didn't have enough. Yes, yes. It's, oh, wait, okay, so I noticed something. It isn't Figma app on my own PC. It's, it works, so, but my trackpad moves a little bit faster and it's not convenient for me. I need, I, I normally, I'm used to the, the speed of my trackpad on the browser using Figma on the browser, but it's a bit faster on desktop. Beyond that, everything is perfect on the browser, on the Figma software. So you could also consider using that as well. All right, all questions will be answered in the chat box. We've come to the end of today's class. Um, thank you very much for coming. And um, 
this week, this is Tuesday, try and share something you what you worked on. A small prototype it doesn't have to be something complex. Just prototype something and share with us on the community in the community um channel. Let's let's see what you're building. Thank you very much for coming and um have a wonderful evening.